Alright, this is a instructional video, the best I can do to explain the how and why I built a hard dodger for my Blue Water 420. One of the reasons why I decided to do it was it was getting a little bit too hard trying to find good quality um, binnami and upholstery fabricators. Um, the soft dodger I had 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 it was at the end of its lifespan, and uh, yeah, I ended up putting my hand through it while I was cleaning it. The other thing was the reason why I changed to glass was that I was getting sick of scratches in the in the um, strata glass. There's also a one piece Stratoglass in the clip in the soft dodger. Uh, it was very expensive piece and it was very difficult for your average marine upholstery tr trimmer to fit and um, and that finding people that had the time to do it was also an issue. Unfortunately it cost it took me around about eight to 900 hours and I'm sure making a soft one would have been a lot quicker than that and cheaper if I added up my an hourly rate for my hours that I spent in the shed through the winter. But the end product I'm very pleased with. The other benefit is handrails on the sides which are coming out of from the cockpit out onto the deck you've got the hand rails on the sides and I made them matching with the ones that run around the cabin top as well They're very comfortable while sailing now and it looks pretty smart so a lot of people asked when I was building it a lot of people always ask are you going to have a centre opening window and there is a um, an optional extra you can buy with this boat which is a, uh, a molded dodger and that does have a um, an opening hatch which is actually just a normal um, uh, deck hatch which is actually cut into the glass um, for simplicity which I thought it might be a bit hard to try and organize the glass to be cut um, so basically I could just order the f five pieces of glass to my dimensions and I didn't have to um, explain that I needed the centre one cut out so it would fit for a hatch. I'm not sure exactly how they install it, do they just sick flex it or do they get holes drilled in the glass to put bolts in it but the other thing I didn't really appeal to was that having the hatch in there reduces your visibility um, for the you know looking out of the you've sort of got the frame and all of that in there now the other option would be to actually have the entire window hinged which then again the simplicity of that makes it a far more complicated so I opted by putting two hatches in the top I mean the original Dodger um, didn't have any ventilation whatsoever so going with glass and now I've got the shades on the glass um, and then having the actual hatches in the rooftop. Yeah, so if I was going to change anything I'd probably put rectangular hatches in the top um, rather than the square ones just to get a little bit more area. Um, still undecided if I'd ever have an opening forward centre hatch um, just really just due to the extra work um, I, I guess it's possible I've seen other boats doing it but uh, yeah for water tightness and um, simplicity no hinges or moving parts glass is in there and you won't get this glass out in a hurry if you wanted to change it now anyway so the only other benefits of the hard dodger is now I can actually get to the back of the boom when I'm putting the sail away um, I've reinforced the roof section with carbon fibre uh, it's super strong and then having the targa piece 
running along the top there as well is actually giving it a, another stringer um, of strength and that's that's all carbon fiber top and bottom um, so it's super strong um, and any other benefits is yeah well you can put shades on there now and one thing I did make one little mistake was that I put um, the shades on the outsides uh, with press studs which now I'm I'm left with but since then I've decided it's much nicer to put them on the insides which I've done now with uh, four of them but the centre one is a bit more of an issue because it's a complicated shape um, I'm going to have to cut out around where the instrument panel is so um, yeah I'll probably leave the press studs in there you can still put them on the outsides um, the problem with it is that um, when the wind's up, they flap, they flap around and uh, can be quite annoying. I tried to get them as tight as I could. I've never fitted press studs before until this project, so um, it was all new to me. But even being tight, uh, the wind can get under there and they, f they flap up and down. So having them on the inside, much better. Uh, also, you can just roll them down, t knock the two top studs out and you can just roll them up and they're there to put up quickly or to remove quickly so yeah so um that's probably around about that part of it and now we'll go into the discussion of what i used um and how i how i did it so there will be a series of photos after this um video and um you'll be able to see a little bit more on how I made the six piece, basically six pieces. So to start with, I used epoxy, epoxy resin through the whole job and uh, 300 gram double bias. And what I did is I got a flat uh, M laminated MDF board and uh, waxed that and then I after making the templates for each, for the three front pieces, the centre one and the port and starboard fronts, I um, I actually uh, used the 10 mil foam. I laid up on the on the flat laminex, the waxed laminex MDF board, which I had steel bars underneath, fencing posts to keep it all flat. I laid the foam onto the laminate, two la layers of 300 gram by, as by axle and then I um, put the foam on and then I put another bit of uh, laminated MDF on the top followed by about 80 kilos of lead weights and then once that had cured uh, it was just a matter of removing the weights and the board and then um, de demoulding the panel and then I did the same with the opposite side um, I only put glass around where the not where the windows were obviously because I had to cut them out so it's only where where the frames were all going to be and uh, yeah so anyway I got the three the first three done and then I tabbed tabbed those three to the right angle on the boat and then I um, so, started with the side the side parts which are under these frames yeah so I ended up with the, putting the sides on and once I put the sides on then I the whole thing wouldn't fit in my van so it made the carting back and forth to the boat a lot harder I had to use a trailer once the sides were on and uh, I got all the top all shaped, by then I had rough fitted most of the um, the bottom section. And then I still hadn't fitted the targa, but um, then it was time to fit the roof and that was quite a straightforward uh, operation. It was just a matter of um, laying the foam out over the, over the, um, the five laminated sides and then um, epoxying it down with thickened epoxy 
uh, glue or glue glue epoxy, and then um, lead weighting it to get the get the shape. And obviously, put a couple of sticks in the middle um, to get the camber, uh, the right camber that I was happy with. And then uh, then the um, the glassing was all done by hand. There, there was no compression glassing because obviously it's a bit hard. You couldn't put that on the flat surface so then I just uh, hand laminated all of that on and then obviously tabbed tabbed it down onto the five pieces that were already in the shape uh, off the, um, the cabin top yes so that's about that part Back inside now, it's uh, 35 degrees outside at Streaky Bay at the moment, so she's quite warm in the sun. So a few people asked me how I stuck it to the cabin top. Well, I was a bit paranoid. Um, a, local, a local shipwright told me that I could just sick a flex it down um, and it would, would never come off. Um, but uh, I like to make things strong so I ended up using solid fiberglass where those mounts are and then um, glass those mounts on all the way around to the outside of the dodger and again on the inside laminated um, with uh, um, eight, eight mil bolts and nuts right through the whole thing and of course Sigaflex as well so that was a uh, a bit of hard work to get that all organized i also had the, a bit of a problem with these speakers here um had to sort of cut out and shape around uh, them uh, so that i can replace them again if i ever need to they were just really put in the wrong spot and then um yeah i used a um a stuff called fleck Fleck, cam fleck paint which is a really nice finish it's a it's a matte lot, lot light gray and it just keeps the glare glare out if I painted it all in the two pack white as you can see it'd be very shiny and glary in here so yeah so that was a good product it's just a water based product and that the rest of it was all sprayed in two pack white um, nor, nor glass paint which is super good Australian made paint uh, put our LED lights in there and they run down inside the targa there you'll never get that wiring out again I opted not to put conduit in there so they were um, I routed out the foam put the wire in and then glass glass the targa on which was actually quite a lot of work but yeah the wires come out down the bottom there where that um, speaker is and then go into where they where the 12 volt is you know. The wiring but no i don't actually really use them that much uh now that i've got them in there but they are handy to uh get in i put a couple of little switches here so i also got a uh so that's the led lights and then this one is my um forward deck light which is used to be you used to have to go down into the chart table to turn it on and off which was a real pain so i decided to um reroute that while I was at it and yeah on the instrument panels I, I didn't I had to move it back a little bit but uh, that's its existing spot when I brought the boat I noticed on the, the optional extra you can buy on this boat um, they don't have any instrument panels there they've put all the instruments up the top uh, which I don't really I get a sore neck uh, looking up there so I opted to leave that the way it was a lot easier than running all your wiring up there as well so there was a couple of factors for that um, but yeah the simplicity of having leaving it where it was 
and then uh, having your speed and wind and all of that all at, uh, at head height type thing in the line of sight much much nicer yeah so that's about it for this uh, little video one so what I'm gonna do next is put uh, all the photos of the build I didn't do any videoing uh, while I when I was building uh, like I said it took 900 hours probably around about three and a half thousand Australian dollars in materials and um, a lot of blood sweat and beers and uh, sleepless nights but uh, yeah I did it all in my shed at home so it was only a matter of really rolling out of bed and uh, starting the day after day after day I'd work seven days a week for three months and um, yeah and then getting it down to the boat was a bit of a mission but uh, yeah I think I went down took it down the boat about five times three in the in the van and then it got to trailer size and then it was two and then the final fit before I painted it maybe six times the final fit and that was to try and get all of the base all nice and cut I had to cast the base on and put a flange all the way around as well on the inside so so yeah that was a fair bit of tinkering around getting it all straight and level there's also a mission in itself but uh, all of these um, radiuses here are all fair and, and rounded so that was all you know it wasn't square and trying to get a bit of bit of shape into it because it certainly uh, can um, you can make by doing a hard dodge you can can make them look quite boxy now uh, I sometimes see a bit of boxiness in this one but uh, there's sort of things that I couldn't really do unless I started doing some really dramatic curves uh, which would have been a lot more work and obviously this wasn't built in a mold it was all hand hand laid no no real plan um, sort of made it up each day and just to my eye so I'm pretty happy with the product and yeah eight mil tough and safety glass when you finish sailing you can just hose it and uh, give it a squeegee never have to worry about um, uh, scratching it uh, and it's probably gonna last last longer than the paint on the dodger uh, yeah anyway well that's uh, that's it for the dodger and uh, I hope you enjoy the, the pictures and um, I'm not sure if I'll put any talking or typing through there but you'll get the main gist of sort of how I laminated each panel and uh, if you have any comments feel free to ask ask about ask me all right cheerio that's it for now